Back with you tonight uh, here on In Focus. Thank you very much for joining us. And another conversation tonight as South Africa gears itself for the festive season. Provincial governments have to increase their alertness for high traffic volumes and road accidents. There's also that grave issue of COVID-19 infections that continue to increase on a daily. Today, we've got the premiers with us to unpack plans by the provinces uh, to mitigate road fatalities and the coronavirus infections. I'm joined now by premiers of the Free State. Uh, or rather, the Premier of the Western Cape, uh, Alan Windy. We've got uh, Gwazulu Natal Premier, Sihe Zigalala, uh, the Premier of Limpopo, Stanley Matabata, as well as the Premier of the Northwest, Bushi Maape. We were due to have the Premier of the Free State as well with us in this conversation, but had to be called into an urgent legislation meeting. You can be a part of the conversation tonight. Uh, you can send through your questions around the safety concerns you have this festive season, 072-110-5584, or you can tweet us at Newsroom405. Premiers, good evening, and thank you very much uh, for your time and joining us tonight uh, here on In Focus. Uh, we have three, I suppose, factors that we are dealing with, even though it feels like deja vu. We are back at third wave all over again. But however... Right now, you have health workers who are contending with uh, burnout. Uh, you've got uh, residents themselves who are uh, somewhat COVID fatigued. And, uh, of course, the prevailing situation right now is that there is relatively looser restrictions geared up for the festive season. All in all, if you ask experts, they'll tell you that makes for a potential rapid spread of the Omicron variant. The question tonight is... Do you have in place a mindset of shifting your pandemic response uh, if many people are infected more quickly than in the previous wave? Let's begin with uh, you, Premier Windy. I mean, the Western Cape has now officially, in technical terms, entered the fourth wave uh, of infections uh, with uh, now the average the past week coming at around 1,600 new cases per day. Yes, uh... Yeah, 1,600. I think our, our seven-day average is probably going to be about 2,000 uh, per day uh, in the fourth wave. Uh, we've done this before, and uh, as I said earlier, it feels like deja vu. I remember the start of the last holiday season at the end of the year, and uh, we had a similar circumstance. We thought we were all prepared, and a different variant came along. So you've got to scurry around to make sure you get to understand that variant as quickly as possible. Um, I think so far, so good with the, with the news on Omicron. It seems to be less virulent uh, as previous uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, strains or, or variations. Uh, but we've got our systems in place. We've got our oxygen. We've got our, our six-point plan, which is uh, behavior change. We've got to keep behavior change going. We've got to make sure our health system is pre protected. Uh, we've got a, a, a system where we de-escalate. Uh, hospital beds when we need them, uh, and we've got trigger points. Uh, at the moment, we've got our various uh, field hospitals. Uh, we've got 35 patients in our Bracken, uh, Fell or Bracken Gate uh, Hospital of Hope. Uh, we've got another couple of wards in our Mitchell's Plain Hospital, uh, which we haven't opened yet. That triggers at 50%. Uh, also, our rural uh, regions have also got field hospitals. They also trigger when, uh, when we have to de-escalate uh, uh, other patients or, or create more space in our hospital system. Uh, but so far, we're okay, and uh, we've got our preparedness in place for, for uh, what's coming at us. Uh, Premier Zagalala, Gwazulu Natal seeing a significant jump up uh, to 22% now in infections. If you look at uh, the, the country's latest 24-hour cycle uh, testing, uh, is, is, is there a, a particular shift in your pandemic response? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Oli, and thanks for having us. We are working hard to ensure that we focus on behavioral change and discourage people from engaging in mass activities or ceremonies. We are also continuing with vaccination programs, as Wazulu Natal is one of the lowest uh, in terms of the vaccination drive. So through the Vuma vaccination weekend, but through also the program, which we call Siakoma uh, Waya Waya, we are all over encouraging people to vaccinate. We are also uh, trying to 
call for more stringent implementation or adherence to regulations. So all plans are there to ensure that we keep the spread. But we are equally ready to deal with uh, the infections as it is clear that the number of hospitalization is increasing. We have enough bed capacity for isolation as well as for uh, the uh, ICU. Uh, we have a capacity, we have also the field hospitals in Peter Marisberg and in Deben. We are also ready uh, to repurpose other beds in other hospitals if the need, uh, if there is a demand for that. Right. So far, we are uh, confident that this is not going to be bad as the second wave in particular, because this, uh, we believe uh, this variant is not so hard and severe like others we have seen before. Thank you. Uh, Premier Matabata, are you expecting that uh, you would, I suppose, manage the fourth wave different to how you had managed the, the third wave with, with such high volumes or high numbers of community transmission? Yes, uh, good evening, Koli, and good evening to the viewers also and the, my colleagues. Yes, we do. You know, in this province, uh, we, 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 we believe, in fact, we are mostly dependent on our people. And hence, all our strategies, because we don't have the kind of infrastructure that you will have in highly urbanized provinces. Uh, that is why we use our people to deal with this virus. And we've been doing this very successfully. So in this particular case, uh, with this uh, Omicron virus uh, variant, we do think that now that people will be coming back home for holidays and the festive season, um, we will be in, in, in encountering more um, more cases of, uh, of of COVID in our province, and that is why we are saying we will be manning roadblocks and ensuring that people who are coming into the province who are not vaccinated, will be in the position to can vaccinate them instantly oh. there and there in a roadblock. Or else, what we would be saying to our people, with those who are not willing to vaccinate, will be dealing, will be, will be using a multidimensional approach there because uh, social development will be there, health will be there, uh, road transport and, 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 and roads will be there. Yeah. To ensure that in our the entry points of the province, people are encouraged to vaccinate. Why are we doing this? Code? You know, in our province now, 97% of people who are hospitalized currently yeah. are those who have not been vaccinated. Yes. And only 7% are those who have been vaccinated. Yes. So you can see that vaccine or people being vaccinated is the best route to go currently. Right. So we need to encourage our people to insist that people should go and vaccinate. Right. But all in all, we are very confident, like we did in the previous variants, that we'll be in the position to can handle the current variant also. Yes. Now, Premier, I understand you could you could uh, mistake me for my colleague. He's a little bit taller. His name is Koli, but oh, I, 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 am, I am Tabo. I'm a little bit short, and I work more at night than during the day. <laughs> I was misled by uh, 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 All right, no, absolutely <laughs> understood. Uh, Premier Mabe, uh, 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 talk to us about uh, the, the, the degree of uh, communication, particularly with uh, tourism uh, products uh, in, in, in your province, uh, in as far as alerting them of um, maybe stricter uh, capacity restrictions uh, and, and, and looking at how to, to, to manage uh, the, the spread in that way. Tabo, you know you are spot on. Good evening to you, good evening to my colleagues, good evening to the viewers. What we are trying to change is the messaging. We have discovered that we are not reaching the youth 18 to 35. 
and we arrived at the conclusion that our messaging was targeting the elderly, people uh, above uh, 55 and so on. So we are changing our messaging and we are targeting these facilities that people will be visiting during the festive period. I can tell you that I was invited to Sun City to go and see how they are doing things. Before you enter Sun City, you must undergo testing. And if you are positive, they refer you to a facility where you are going to be isolated. Now we have identified similar facilities. First step, we communicated with them. Please ensure that you limit the number of people who visit these facilities. But if people do come and they come in the numbers that we are proposing, please ensure that they vaccinate at the facility. We have identified that the spread happens mainly, mainly in Bujanala, where we have seen high numbers of people who are infected. And we have identified Rustenberg, Moses Kotani, Moretele, and Madibe. And we are saying that our focus should be more on these areas. So the key issue is we are talking to uh, owners of these facilities. We are saying to them, please limit the numbers for now. And we are changing our messaging because we know people will be very active during this period will be the youth. And so we're trying to reach the youth and say, please, even if you have to celebrate the festive period, please do it in smaller numbers and ensure that you have vaccinated. And we are up in the ante in terms of vaccination. We are doing vaccination every Friday. We concentrate on the youth. Every Saturday, we concentrate on rural areas. Every Sunday, we go to churches. Because, you know, there are many stories about, uh, about Omicron, about this and that. But about vaccination, it's clear. There's no doubt this is the only weapon we have against this uh, virus. So vaccination, vaccination, vaccination is the thing. Right, uh, we'll take a break and come back. And I see we are joined now by the Free State. And we'll get a sense and a response from that province in a moment. Come back. Thanks for staying on. In Focus, News from Africa, Channel 405. We're speaking to uh, the premiers uh, tonight as uh, the numbers of infections uh, of the Omicron variant of the COVID-19 virus continue uh, to surge. There's been some safety concerns around the travel during this festive season. As I mentioned earlier on, we had, of course, also reached out to the premier of the Free State, had to uh, go into an urgent seating in the legislature but uh, of course we are now joined by the MEC for health in that uh, province uh, Mayor Munseng Siu. Uh, good evening man thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, joining us uh, tonight here on In Focus. There is of course a, a, a grave concern particularly around the rate of transmission the growth advantage for Omicron is uh, that uh, which is over that of Delta and in some instances, uh, this could lead to even health workers possibly uh, getting infected and being forced to isolate at once, putting some essential services uh, at risk. How, how do you plan to deal with that situation in the province? We, we, are, re we are also um, seeing that uh, problem in our province where we've seen uh, many of our health workers uh, testing positives in the clinics, in the, in, the, in the hospitals, many of them, the doctors and the nurses, those people that we need to take care of our patients are testing positive. And what is more concerning is the fact that they have to go uh, at home to, as, I mean, to for quarantine until they, they have, uh, they've uh, concluded their quarantine period, that is the 10 days. And then at the time we are having a shortage of staff within our facilities because of that. Otherwise we, we, we are not really uh, that much alarmed because what, what we're seeing is that they're having uh, not very serious uh, 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 um, symptoms. Most of them would just have a flu of two days, three days, and then after that they are fine. We then have, just have to let them uh, stay at home for. 10 days until they are well, and then they can come back. What is uh, what we are doing at the moment, because we, we, we can't do anything except for the fact that for them to stay at home, so that those that have concluded their, their period of, of, of um, isolation, they can come back and, and help each other. But what, uh, what we are doing as the hospitals, especially because the problem that we are having is mostly seen here in Bloemfontein, 
our hospitals in Mangawung are helping each other where they can see that uh, this hospital now is, is full because of other services, not necessarily because of, of COVID-19. They then uh, make sure that they help each other. We transfer patients uh, between the, the hospitals, the Mangawung hospitals, so that we don't uh, send any patients that need services at home. Premier Wendy, that question that I put to Premier Mahap as well, I suppose going to you, and I'll put it as well to the other premiers. Uh, going into the holidays, have you issued some guidance, particularly to the tourism properties? I mean, what we are seeing, um, and I'm not saying certainly we are in, in that level, uh, some uh, countries, if you look at Canada, if you look at Hong Kong, if you look at the U.S., right, they, they, they have... Um, uh, 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 put out some stringent testing and quarantine requirements uh, for inbound travelers. Uh, uh, have you put such in place? So, uh, obviously, if you're inbound into our airports, uh, then there definitely are uh, test mechanisms. Um, if you, you must show that you're, you're vaccinated, you must show your PCR test. Um, and if you, you need a PCR test, you can actually have it done uh, a rapid test at the airport. Um, I also must say that, uh, you know, obviously we do know that uh, outdoors, fresh air and keeping your numbers smaller. So this does put a bit of pressure on specifically the hospitality industry, our restaurants. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that uh, the city of Cape Town has started and I think a number of our other municipalities will do it as well. They are closing streets off during this festive season and encouraging those restaurants to move their tables outside and to uh, you know, have fresh air uh, to enable people to, to be in the open rather than in closed uh, environments. Because we know that uh, if you are going to be gathering, you need to make sure that uh, there's fresh air and flow uh, that definitely does mitigate risk. And of course, we're asking everybody that's involved in the hospitality industry to play their part um, just as we ask citizens to play their part. But the business end uh, of uh, tourism, you know, they have felt the brunt of this uh, pandemic for the last 19 months. So I think they understand it more than anybody, that they need to be responsible so that uh, we can get that balance right of, of lives and livelihoods. And uh, so if they, if they don't themselves become these spreader events, that means that we can, uh, we can maintain, uh, you know, the, the kind of openness that we've got at the moment um, yeah. without, uh, without the, the system getting overloaded. Because at the end of the day, we've just got to monitor our hospital systems. Can we, can we uh, you know, have we got sufficient beds? Can we manage the pressure? That's why you would slow things down if your hospitals need that backup. And uh, so far, so good. Um, we, we, uh, I think we're now sitting at 57,000 booster shots for our healthcare workers. Uh, that's almost, uh, you know, almost all of them are getting boost, booster shots now. And uh, we've got standby extra staff, uh, should we need it, yeah. uh, as part of that six-point plan. We've got to make sure that the front line are looked after. A quick one on that booster plan, uh, rollout uh, plan. Uh, do you have enough stock? I remember the last... Uh, time you were talking about procuring your own vaccines uh, how are you at that in making sure you expand the availability uh, of those booster shots so we definitely have sufficient uh, stock uh, that's part of the saison care for the healthcare workers and uh, our booster shots for citizens uh, they'll start in mid-january when um, when the six months uh, period of uh, once you've once you've had your second dose of Pfizer. Yeah. So uh, uh, citizens 60 and older, they were the first to get uh, their, their, their vaccine shots. So they'll be able to get their booster okay. shots should they need. And uh, of course, we also are open if it's a medical, uh, you know, if you, if you are, have got an immune system that is, that is uh, battling, your doctor can prescribe that booster shot already. Premier Zagalala, in, in the last uh, uh, holiday season, you had attempted to enforce tighter capacity rules, but even stronger enforcement of the mask policies. How, how successful was that? And are you, are you taking that similar approach this festive season? Yes, we are, but we are allowing uh, uh, visitors to come to the province and the people of KwaZulu-Natal to visit all areas they want to go. Uh, we have uh, the vaccination sites which are drive-through, 
uh, especially around toll gates and especially on areas where we've got uh, roadblocks. We are uh, linking this program with the program of the safety plan uh, on our roads to address road carnages. So it is a linked program. When you come into Wazulu Natal, either through N2 or N3, you will get uh, us there and you will then be checked. If you are not vaccinated, you'll be directed to vaccinate. Uh, and then in all establishment, hospitality establishment, we've met with the industry and made it clear that all uh, regulations must be followed as they are. We are getting a maximum cooperation, except a few who don't close uh, on time, but yeah. we are also working on that. Yeah. So enforcement is going to be there yeah. while it, allowing people it, it, it to was, uh, so, Sorry, them, Premier. But enforcement will be there. It, it was a real embarrassing situation, that one, particularly for you, and I think for Gauteng as well, uh, particularly at the night spots. And uh, unfortunately, because of social media, these spread really quickly where they are overcrowded, they are closing late, and so on and so forth. And there are some, some capacity issues as far as enforcement is concerned. Uh, how, how are you planning to mitigate that? So if you have noticed uh, in these days, uh, the Department of Community Safety, working with the Department of Transport and the Department of uh, Health, were all over on roadblocks. Then at night, we begin to visit these establishment our restaurant and check whether they are compliant or not. And we take a decision and intervene on time. That situation was bad. And it shows that some people think that to adhere to regulations, they do it for government. While it is not so, you adhere to these regulations for your own health and your loved ones. Health concerns, uh, safety concerns around this festive season. Uh, let us in on what your views are tonight. 072-110-5584. Otherwise, uh, you can tweet us tonight at Newsroom405. Uh, we've got Health MEC in the three state. Memon Seng Tsiu. We've got uh, the Premier of uh, Limpopo, Stanley Matabata. We've got the Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Sikhezi Galala. The Premier of the Northwest Province, Rushima Ape, as well as uh, the Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy, to take those questions for us. In Focus continues next and we turn our focus to some of the uh, safety issues around crime and policing during this festive season uh, but also some road safety issues as well tonight. Stay with us. Back here live with us tonight. Conversation with the Premier is in preparation for the festive season period. Some challenges around the fight against COVID-19 but also uh, some crime uh, statistics um, are being revealed particularly in Limpopo yesterday. Premier Matabata, the police minister saying the safety of women Women and children uh, in the province need to be prioritized as Limpopo has now come at the second highest as far as number of rape cases uh, in the country between July and September last year. Tell us what is the office of the Premier doing and how you're coordinating with the Provincial uh, Police Commissioner's office to ensure that this particular matter is uh, prioritized and police operations are particularly uh, uh, sensitized uh, for this characteristic uh, of, of, of the province that has been highlighted? You know, Tabo, that is something that is disturbing us quite a lot in this province. Because uh, you look at uh, the areas where these statistics are, are actually overheating or perhaps are too hot, too high, sorry. It's uh, the area of uh, the uh, Vembe district where you've got uh, too many rape and murder cases of uh, uh, gender-based violence. So what we have done as a province was to establish a team, a, a multidisciplinary team again that will deal uh, with, with this kind of things where you've got social development, you've got uh, safety and security, we've got the police commissioner as part of that team. And uh, I think it is working because you, 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 you're actually getting to the root cause of the problem. You are not just dis dealing with the symptoms currently. Yeah. So we have seen it working in other areas like Waterberg. We have seen it 
working in uh, uh, Mopani district, where we are actually starting to reduce, to see reduced cases of this germ. Yeah. And where we are starting to see awareness being, uh, our people being conscientized, uh, that uh, it, it can be that you say it is not my business. It is everybody's business if a woman is raped. It is everybody's business if a child is being killed or traumatized or even abused. It's everybody's business, male or female, young or old. It must be our business, all of us. Yeah. That is the message that we are trying to inculcate within our people. How, 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 how are you ensuring swift, swift response and swift arrest? You know, if you look at the Bemba district, you're talking about far-flung areas, uh, which uh, at some instances are quite far apart, and there is no visibility mm. there of policing at all times. Hence, I said, we are a rural province, and we have admitted that. And we have said, for us to be successful, we have got to identify our weaknesses and come up with mitigating uh, measures to deal with our weaknesses. So we have realized, and we have all, you must also identify your strengths. Our strength, we have realized that our strength is in our people, human resource. Our people are actually our most important assets. That is why I'm saying we came up with a multifaceted team that will deal with this problem from the root cause of the problem. Uh, our communities must not just say it is the business of the police to deal with this matter. Hence, if you look at it, Tabo, most, if I, I think more than 90% of those cases that we are talking about here, despite the fact that they are happening in rural areas, they are actually being um, reported to the police. And uh, we, we've got convictions. You, even the high, our high profile cases like your, uh, the Ramabulana case and the like in, in Bemba, all of them, people have been arrested. People have been convicted for that. Why? Because we are making good use of our asset, which is our people because we don't have other assets that we can depend upon. Uh, MEC, you, the uh, road safety plan was launched in the Free State by Transport uh, Minister Figilam Balula uh, yesterday. Talk to us about how the various stakeholders and departments are coordinating this festive season as far as uh, bringing their bit to the national festive season road safety plan. Yes, we, we are working together with the uh, law enforcement as Department of Health. We are collaborating with the Department of Police, uh, Roads and Transport. We are working together. We are at the, at the, at the, at the, at the roadblocks. What we also do, we, we, we have uh, chosen the strategic roads, especially those, the, those that link Lesotho and the Free State, where we are having those big uh, roadblocks. Uh, the, the health department is there where we are conducting our tests and we also are ensuring that uh, those that uh, have not vaccinated, we encourage them to, to get vaccination because we also go together with our vaccinators at the roadblocks to go and assist with vaccination. We also make sure that at the, at the ports of entry, we've got a uh, testing that is done so that people that come into the country are tested that they are free from the virus. Um, the, the other thing that happens is that the police do the surveillance around the, the port of entry as there are people that cross between the two countries illegally. We are taking care of that. And the municipalities help us in ensuring that there is compliance, especially when it comes to the gatherings. That would be either the weddings, the, the, the funerals and all that. We are depending on the compliance officers from the municipalities. Yeah. Premier Zagalala, two things in, in particular that are concerned uh, for, for Guazulu Natal. We are uh, talking now of the following particular matter, and uh, it's sending shock waves throughout the country. People who are looking at the province are, are beginning to worry at the unacceptable high rate of violent crimes in the area. Uh, but also, maybe you can also speak to the issue of how you. Uh, responding to the N3 toll concession report that single vehicle crashes on the N3 uh, are the highest, and this is linked to driver error. 
Well, I think the first is to deal with the last question. As you are saying, in the entry, there are those who uh, abuse uh, speed. Uh, we are working with police. Uh, in Guazulu Natal, we have almost a uh, roadblock in every uh, 50 to 60 kilometers. And that shows that in each space, uh, we're trying to limit the speed uh, of uh, drivers. We also are working hard on behavioral change and, edu and public education to ensure that all people take full responsibility uh, as they drive. So we are working on that. MSC Nkonyeni and ourselves, as well as the police, who are all over dealing with that matter. And uh, I believe this incident was unfortunate, but our police are all over. The following experience is bad. Indeed, these things create a bad impression and a bad image of the province. The province is seen as violent, and we need to address that. And that's why we are working with multidisciplinary uh, force, uh, forces of the police, uh, the army uh, in some areas, uh, which are national key points, but also other law enforcement agencies to ensure that we deal with these challenges. We are all over. We are trying to ensure that we create stability in all areas that seem to be affected by high level of crime. Right. These things seem to be associated more with uh, uh, drugs and those who sell drugs. It's affecting townships around Devon, and we are improving our response to that. Yeah. Premier Maape, you recently held a uh, prevention uh, campaign, crime prevention through environmental design, let's say, Ma. Uh, what, what, what is that campaign about and, and how, how are you scaling up the efforts and those operations in the province? You know what, we are going to take this campaign to a higher level. Next week, uh, the Minister of Police will be visiting us we are going to raise awareness about matters of crime prevention. We have started with our roadblocks. I'll be joining some of them. We have requested for more police visibility. And we have uh, requested some of our officers to forego leave this time so that we must increase visibility. We, I visited a village in Silver Grants last week and the people complained about uh, one satellite police station. So we are interacting with community to say, in terms of crime here in the area, what can we immediately do so that we protect you during the festive period? We have just completed our exercise of auditing community policing forums, and these are prepared now to engage also in the process of working closely with the police to ensure that we deal with the festive period crime. So I think all systems are in place, the police, the community, and I think that the MECs in my government will not be taking leave. They'll be joining the police and the traffic officers at the roadblocks so that we deal with issues of drunken driving, speeding, and so on. But we've also identified areas and the particular crime that manifest in that area. For instance, we know that uh, in several grants, the biggest crime there is it's gender-based violence. We know that in areas like Hanyesa and so on, stock theft. We know that in other areas, it will be mugging and stabbing. So that we are focusing on these areas to ensure that we minimize the occurrence of crime as much as possible. Wind, unfortunately, as early as today, three men killed in, in a Cape Town shooting there in, in, in Kylie Jet. Again, a community policing forum, they're responding to that. But also there have been um, reports of uh, car thefts at, at tourism attractions as well uh, that, are, that are beginning to be a, a little bit of a challenge. How's the province responding? Oh, you're muted there, uh, Premier. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. 
I mean, uh, you know, safety has been one of the big issues that I have been focusing on since, uh, you know, coming into office. So for the last two and a half years, um, I mean, we've put on extra boots on the ground through uh, municipalities. Uh, we're getting to a thousand new, uh, this month, there will be up to a thousand new extra officers. They are deployed to the murder hotspots, uh, Kailicha being one of them. Uh, I was very encouraged, you know, this is a part of a 10-year plan on how do we halve the murder rate. I was quite encouraged with uh, Minister Becky clearly giving the crime statistics saying that there's only one province where the murder numbers have come down and it's in those areas that we've got those deployed officers. Although it is early days, so, uh, you know, I don't want to jump to too many conclusions yet, but uh, at least that was an encouraging uh, you know, set of numbers. Um, we also have deployed our tourism. We've got tourism offices that we put out. Uh, we've got uh, our violence prevention programs, uh, boys to men. We've got to, we've got to make sure that we get uh, those young boys who are being drawn into the gangs. We've got to get them out of the, out of that, uh, that environment. We've got programs that we've put them into uh, so that they can play a positive role in society. I always think that those are the risk takers when they're young and those are your your potential uh, entrepreneurs in the future. Um, so we've got quite a comprehensive safety plan um, and it links across from tourism to, you know, the big, the big crimes, whether they be uh, murder and trying to drop the murder rate or focusing on gender-based violence. Uh, we've just put in an extra uh, six new shelters for women. Uh, that's uh, taking us up to 23 now across the province. Uh, really, it is a big focus of ours. We've got a, what we call the safety plan. It's a living document. Uh, you know, there's not anything fixed because, uh, you know, crime changes all the time. I mean, we've just seen, I think, in the last uh, uh, sort of 15 months, extortion has been something that's just re raised its head. And, uh, you know, that's been uh, a big issue that we've had to focus on across the province. I think slowly but surely that seems to be coming under control but uh, you've got to be on your toes. Uh, we've, got our, we've got our own piece of legislation now. We've got a provincial police ombudsman as well. So, we, you know, we've got a comprehensive focus on safety um, across the board because it is a big issue uh, in our province. All right, we take a break. When we come back, let's get more of your views and questions on safety and concerns around this festive season for the Premiers. 072-110-5584. Tweet us also tonight at Newsroom 405. In Focus continues shortly. Right, you're back with us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus News from Africa, Channel 405. We've got MEC for Health in the Free State, Memun Seng Tsiu. We've got uh, the Premier of Limpopo, Stanley Matabata, the Premier of KwaZulu Natal, Sikhe Zigalala, the Premier of the Northwest, Bushi Maape, as well as uh, the Premier of the Western Cape, Alan Windy. And of course, uh, your thoughts and views tonight uh, around this conversation, 072-110-5584. A lot of people uh, wanting to, to, to hear from what I, I'm seeing on social media around the question of vaccinations in, in, in particular. I've already heard uh, Premier Matabata saying they will be uh, vaccinating even at, at the roadblocks uh, them, the, the, themselves. What other creative solutions do we have in place for, for quickly, particularly vaccinating the vulnerables and, and the frontline um, workers? Uh, Matthew? Uh, what we're doing at, at, the, at, at our facilities, we, for the frontline workers, we do have a vaccination sites in all our facilities. So we are able to take care of our, our, our frontline workers. To the vulnerable, that, is, that would be the people at home in the rural areas. We, have, we take our people there, our vaccinators, and we have our pop-up sites there. That is how, as we state, we managed to, to now have vaccinated more than 50%. Uh, at this point in time, we are at 52% uh, vaccination of adult uh, population of the free state. I think our vaccination uh, project is going very well. So we, we, we are able to do that. But uh, with our healthcare workers, they don't really uh, respond positively like they did in the first round of Sisonke, where we were able to vaccinate uh, 24,000 of them. But at this point, we are moving very slowly. We see them only about 5%, uh, 5, 5, uh, 100, 5, not 500,000, 5,000 of them already have, mm. have already uh, vaccinated. So we are trying to, to talk to them, encourage them to, do, to vaccinate because others had raised an issue that the fact that they got J&J &J in the beginning 
can they be allowed now when they when, when they get the booster can they be allowed to get a, a Pfizer because they've been looking at the efficacy of the vaccines that's all they were asking for yes. maybe that is why we see them uh, very reluctant to come for the uh, the booster on J and J yeah absolutely Premier Zagala, and that's the question around around the, the the hesitancy and the reluctance to take the, the, the vaccine, right? If you look at uh, what uh, other countries um, in the world are doing, it's a, it's a multi-pronged plan, which include one, a broad-based outreach campaign on educating people around uh, vaccines. Uh, but uh, you've also got a, 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 a concerted effort in the expansion of the availability of the vaccines, but also the variety of those vaccines with our, which are available, which is something that we do not really have in South Africa right now. We have two choices, and people are saying we need to broaden these choices so that people have got more variety to choose from. Not only that, you, you, you then also have uh, the support that needs to come with some of these restrictions that, that we put in place. And of course, the 350 not getting through to, to people uh, in time, others having to, to, to reapply. And it's just, it creates a whole lot of hesitancy in participating and having a buy-in into these processes. Yes, you are quite correct. And that's why our message must be aligned and be accurate. And we are working with uh, institutions that deals with research to ensure that we speak and try to educate our people around the need to vaccinate. You must also start from the fact that there are people who have not vaccinated where you still need to encourage them and make them understand the need to vaccinate. Secondly, you must then move to those who must take the booster. So it is important that public education and awareness is uh, uh, spread all over. And we are grateful of those scientists from UKZN and from other institutions around, UKZ, around KZN who are working with us on this program. But secondly, there are those who continue to spread uh, false messages about vaccines. And we are working with traditional leaders to counter that and to reach to communities to ensure that people accept vaccines and vaccinate. We are also uh, working with the religious sector, which have been a uh, part of us and partnered with us on all programs to fight COVID-19. And uh, in, in the, the Northwest in, in particular, I'm interested in how you are spreading the message. You've said now you have changed your target audience as far as the messaging is concerned how are you getting the message through to that target audience you know we have embarked on a program of utilizing significant others to the youth you know sports personality tv personalities we are using uh, sports we are using music uh, it's a bit tricky because at the same time, we don't want people to congregate in, uh, in large numbers, but we want to use these methods that will appeal to the youth. And so we are targeting them and using things that resonate with them, things that mean something to them, so that then they can come to these vaccination points. But one other thing is to ensure that it's, the vaccination site is within reach. It's easily accessible, and it's there from the morning up to the early evening, because the youth during the day, the youth is busy with other things. Then in the evening and in the morning, that's when you can reach them. So we are using different methods of communication to reach the youth. And uh, Premier Matabata, the adult rate of vaccinating is it uh, sitting now stagnant in the bubble or are you s s continuing to, to 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 gain access to to the adult population uh, to get them vaccinated who are the most vulnerable mm -hmm. yes you see with our adult population we don't have a problem uh, take for example in our uh, those who are 60 60 years and above we've got 78% uh, of them that are already vaccinated. Those who are 50 years and above, 
we've got 74% uh, of them who have already been vaccinated. So our biggest problem is amongst the young ones. Um, when it comes to the youth, that's where we, we are encountering serious problems. That is why we are saying we need to start uh, coming up with uh, new innovations, uh, making every area, every center that attracts people a vaccinating, a vaccinating site. We, are, we have uh, introduced the issue of uh, malls. We have introduced the issue of even going to the cinemas. We have introduced uh, the issue of uh, going to the churches also, like uh, Premier Scalala says, making use of the religious bodies to ensure that they are also vaccinating, vaccinating. The advantage about us in South Africa is that we don't have a problem of not having the vaccine. We've got the vaccine. The only problem is attracting people to come and vaccinate. When it comes to, and if I have to answer your question, when it comes to the adult population, we are happy in this province. We are above 70% already. We, we, we appreciate you all uh, coming through and, uh, of course, uh, helping us in this conversation. I wonder if we still have uh, Premier Windy there on, on, on the line, but if we, we, we don't, I'll put this one to you, Premier Zigalala. The, the, the question around the, the youth and the safe reopening uh, of schools has really come to the fore now in ensuring that uh, we get the, the, the pupils vaccinated uh, so that they are protected and uh, there are no concerns uh, should the schools reopen. How are you approaching that as a province? Well, using this opportunity between now and January to ensure that more people get vaccinated and also to ensure that as we follow the regulations and the health uh, advises or advises from a uh, health uh, scientist uh, in terms of age of those who can vaccinate. We then follow that and we're hoping that when the schools open in the second week of January, we would have more young people or students having vaccinated so that they go back to school freely. Uh, you will notice that some countries like Cuba have managed to vaccinate their people and schools are now proceeding as normal. And that's what we are aiming to achieve as well. Premier, I appreciate your time. Uh, Premier Matabata, uh, Premier Maape, as well as MECTU and uh, Premier Wendy, thank you very much uh, for coming on and being a part of our conversation uh, tonight.